Hello, in this video I'm going to show you how to build the carburetor gasket in the Interpreting Engineering Drawings 8th edition book. I'm on page 20, once again doing the carburetor gasket. So the first thing I want to do is draw a couple of circles on the top plane. I'm going to glue one circle right to the origin and I'm going to draw another circle just to the right of it. I'm going to make the diameter of this circle 4 inches and I'm going to add a relation between these two circles and force them to be equal. Now I want to add a relation between these two points to make them horizontal so that this circle doesn't move up and down I'm going to fix that by taking these two points and making them horizontal. And now it won't move up or down, but it slides left to right. So I want to make sure that I prevent that by adding my dimension of 3.4. So what's going to happen is, is these circles are going to be right on top of one another, and, and we can't SOLIDWORKS cannot extrude this shape, so I'm going to use the trim tool and I'm going to drag my cursor across the center. So now we have two of these circles that are like fused together. And then I'm going to extrude them. I'll extrude them up a quarter inch. And now I'm going to do the same thing I'm going to go back to the top plane. I'm going to draw a circle up here, down here, and one up here. And we're going to do the same approach. And these two circles should fuse in to the first two. So the first thing I want to do is make the circles equal. So I'll choose these two blue circles, make them equal, add some dimensions to give them a home. So the diameter of that circle is 2.2, the distance from point to point, or the total amount is 3.5, which means the distance halfway is 3.5 divided by 2. And then I want to make sure that it is half the distance over in this direction, so I'm going to say 3.4 divided by 2. I'm going to make these two points vertical and then I'm going to pause for a second uh, and kind of explain. So the first sketch was the two circles, use the dimensions and relations to locate them and then I extruded. This is my second sketch on the top plane, drawing two circles using the dimensions and the relations to give them a home. And now I'm going to extrude these two circles and I'll rotate my model by holding the middle mouse button down. Uh, I want to take this second sketch that I've drawn and extrude it upward. And if it's at the same thickness, you're going to notice that it's going to blend in to the other two. So now I have this silly shape, which doesn't look like much, but um, we're just using circles. So let me, let me back up a second. We'll go back to the first sketch, and there was two circles that were trimmed in between. And then our second sketch was two circles that just simply merged into the existing feature. So we're slowly building this model using one tool, and that's the circle tool. So my third feature, so we have two features in our feature manager, but my third feature, again, is going to be on the top plane. I'm going to hit the normal two view because I don't want to sketch crooked, so I'm going to hit normal two. And now I'm going to draw a circle over here to the side, put another one over here, and then add some relations. I definitely want this circle to be equal to that circle. And I want this point, this point, and this point to be horizontal with one another. So I'm going to go to add relation. 
make sure that I click all three points. So all three points are selected and I'm going to say horizontal. Let's start adding some dimensions. So this diameter is two inches. The distance from center to center is seven and a half. And to make this really easy, I'm going to click this arc, which is going to default to the center point. So I'm going to click this arc and then this circle and say 7.5 divided by 2. And that centers them perfectly. So same procedure. I'm going to hit my extrude, uh, my isometric button, extrude this shape upward. These two circles are going to blend into the existing shape. And now I'm going to use the fillet command to blend all of these circles together, or all of these disks rather. Because we've got that, that, that. Now I'm going to use a fillet of 0.5, and I'm going to go, I'm going to zoom in and slowly grab each one of these. little line segments and that can all be done at the same time. I'm just clicking each one individually and now I've got all of those fillets blended in. So the outside shape of my carburetor gasket is done. The last thing I have to do is add circles. So again this entire part almost was created using the circle tool. So I'm going to go back to my top plane, create a new sketch, select normal tool, and I'm going to start drawing some circles. So let's start here, draw one here. And you'll notice that when I bring my cursor near the edge of the arc, the center point pops up. So I bring my cursor near it, center point pops up, drop the circle. I do the same thing for this one. Same thing for this one. Good. Now I'm going to add some equal relations. I want to make sure that all of these smaller holes are equal. I want to make sure that these two circles are equal. Then I can dimension one circle at a time. we're done. So now I can take all of these circles and now we're using a different feature tool. It's called extrude cut. So I don't want to add this material. I want to take these circles and remove them. I want to subtract instead of add. So I'm going to hit my finish sketch button and instead of clicking the extrude boss base button, I'm going to take this selected sketch and I'm going to switch to a extruded cut. And it's going to take all of these circles and it's going to cut them through the part. So you'll notice what SolidWorks is doing is it's trying to cut those circles downward, which is wrong. So if I were to hit the green check mark, it's going to yell at me. It's going to give me an error because it assumed the wrong direction. You can see by the arrow. So I have to come over here underneath direction one and select reverse direction. So that's going to take those circles and it's going to try and remove the material in the upward direction, which is what we want. So let me use my rollback bar, I'm going to left click and drag it. That's what we started with. We built up to that, then to that, added some fillets to soften up all the edges, and then used a series of circles to cut through the shape. And that's how you build the carburetor gasket. At least it's one way to build the carb gasket. And if you want to know if you got the carb gasket right, 
if you follow along with this video and you're using plain carbon steel and your units are inches, the weight of your carb gasket should weigh the same as mine. So to do that, to find out how much this thing weighs, we can go to evaluate, the evaluate tab right here, and then click mass properties. And that's gonna tell you, or it's gonna tell me, that the weight of this carb gasket using plain carbon steel is 1.35 pounds. If you get anything other than 1.35 pounds, then that means you must have missed something or you have an incorrect dimension, but it at least gives you something to shoot for. So the mass of the carburetor gasket is 1.35 pounds. If you've modeled it correctly, this is the mass that you should get.